Hi guys, in this recording I wanted to talk about coordination of consultants during the construction phase in a development cycle. My name's Adam Panisi, I own and run a company called AdPen and Liberty Blue Wealth. We help educate people in property investment and property development. So I wanted to share with you my knowledge and experience about coordinating consultants during the construction phase or getting ready for the construction phase. And the reason why this is top of my mind is that I've got a couple of projects which are at that point in time where all the design consultants have done all of their things and then need to coordinate between them. So it's really important at this phase that all of the consultants talk to each other and not only do they talk to each other but they actually compare drawings and discuss certain elements within a, a building or certain elements in the design that impacts each other. So the whole point of coordinating consultants, the construction consultants, is that when the building is underway, and so when it's being built, that there's not as many issues that come up. So that you try and minimize the variations and you minimize the delays during construction. So for those that have done this before, or if you're watching and you have done a building, whether it's a single residential house or it is a multi-unit development or multi-dwelling development, uh, you'll know how important this is. During the phase of construction, which is only one phase of a seven step development cycle, so construction is almost the last one, it's when you actually get to physically see what's happening on the site and the thing comes out of the ground. I think it's the most exciting stage uh, because you're actually seeing these plans come to life. Uh, but it is only one step out of the whole seven. Um, so getting your documentation right is critical to make sure that your builder knows what he's actually building but then delivers what your expectation is or, or what your consultant's expectation is and does it in a timely manner so he doesn't have delays um, if things clash or if things don't work together. So I'll give you an example of a couple of consultants uh, where they sort of mesh together and they coordinate. So an architect or a draftsman does, or a building designer for smaller projects, they do the plans of the development, so I'm sure most people would know that. Uh, so the plans of the dwelling, so, so they're going to do a layout that, where the walls are located, the doors, if you've got bathrooms. So from their plans, they, that sort of sets the baseline for the other consultants to plug into. So an engineer, so a structural engineer will do the footings, they'll do the walls, and they'll work out what beam sizes are needed to hold the building up. So with the footings, they need to know how, well they work out how deep the footings are depending on the soil type, uh, how thick the slab is, and then the walls, what thickness of walls there are, are the walls structural, so are they holding up the next level, uh, if there's window cutouts. Uh, then uh, the beams that go over the top of the windows. Uh, so that's your structural engineer. And then the other one is the plumbing. So internal hydraulics. So that's your waste, so your sewer. The potable water, so the drinking water. You've got hot and cold drinking water. Um, and then you've got waste, which so waste water which then flows back into the sewage. Um, so all of those things need to mesh together uh, and the structural engineer who's doing the actual structure, they need to know where these waste pipes are going and where these hot and cold water pipes are going. Um, the architect needs to know where the structural beams are going so that he can accommodate for those in his plans. And the architect also needs to know about where the plumbing is going as well um, so that if he needs to move a toilet over a little bit or if he needs to move another element 
uh, because he sets the baseline. So for an ex- as an example, some walls are load-bearing, uh, and that those load-bearing walls might have to be made out of a, out of a different material, um, or they may have to be thicker. And if they're load-bearing, they're holding the floor up above them generally, or the roof. Um, so that all needs to be accommodated. Uh, one other thing you've got is the ducting, so like air conditioning ducts. Uh, with like say a two-story house you need normally the air conditioning unit is up the top um, or the fans located sorry either up the top or on the floor so you've got to be able to pump air from the fan unit all the way through the dwelling and then get it into each bedroom through the vent so you've got to be able to run that ducting somewhere so the architect needs to know where the ducting is the engineer needs to know and the architect needs to know where is it popping up in the floor Um, Is that going to affect the structural integrity? Now, you don't have to be an expert in all of these things. Uh, You don't need to know the intricacies on where things are going into the building. All you need to know is that you need a coordination meeting um, and and your consultants need to be able to coordinate with each other. Um, And the best and easiest way is to get all of them in the room and if you've got a development manager, they'll manage this for you. So the development manager will sit in the meeting and he'll run that coordination meeting. If you are the development manager, so if you're managing all these consultants yourself separately, and you don't have to have a degree to manage consultants separately, if you're doing a small project, uh, you can do this yourself. When you get into the larger projects, they become more complicated And unless you've got an engineering degree or a project management degree or something along those lines, you'll need to get a project manager. Um, I see people try and do it themselves. If they're not in the industry, um, generally you're gonna stuff it up. Um, So you you hire somebody and their role is a development manager or a project manager. So they will coordinate the consultants. Um, I would encourage you to go to those meetings so you know how your building is going to work out at the end. So you're going to have to compromise on certain things. So as an example, I remember I had a couple of um, dwellings that had uh, vents, air ducts running through the wardrobes and it reduced the wardrobe space. So from a developer's point of view, I'm trying to sell these products now with smaller wardrobes. Uh, that didn't affect those particular ones I'm thinking of because the wardrobes are already oversized. Uh, but it has affected some other units where we've had to be a little bit more creative. Um, some other units I've been involved with uh, where the air ducting or the sewer pipes from the floor above, so the, the sewerage system runs down, so you've got to create a cavity. If you're cutting into things like wardrobe spaces is the wardrobe space still usable in the in the building is it going to affect the sales price is there going to be a massive column in the middle of the room or are you going to have to do a bulkhead that's going to be ugly Um, so you have your development manager in that coordination meeting coordinating the various consultants and he'll do that over the course of getting the whole construction package together But what you need to be across is how is it going to compromise the end product and are you are you happy with that is that acceptable to you as a developer now development managers are supposed to be across all ends of the development spectrum if you're a developer um, you still in my personal experience I still want to oversee even if I've got a development manager I still want to oversee and make sure the product that they're delivering is what I'm expecting because that can get miscommunicated or there's just different expectations the expectation that I have doesn't always uh, or isn't always the same as a development manager and it's not until you highlight that specific issue which may come up in one of those meetings that then they'll realize, hey, this isn't acceptable, we need to find another solution or another alternative that is acceptable. Um, And as a developer, it is always good, I find, 
to make sure you're across most of the detail. Even though it's at a high level, you need to know what you're actually developing because at the end of the day, you're ultimately responsible for the financial performance of that development. So you still need to be across the intricacies. You're not there designing the wall thicknesses, the slab thicknesses. You're not doing all of that hard work. That's what you have consultants for. You just gotta have an oversight over all of your consultants. Uh, so I hope you've gotten value out of that. Next time when you're doing your coordination and getting your consultants together, uh, getting ready to do the construction of your dwelling, whether it's a single dwelling or multiple. Uh, just keep in mind about the coordination of consultants and how important that is to then get the construction right so that your builder minimizes variations for you and the process is as seamless as it needs to be during construction. Thanks for listening. Leave me a comment. If you want to know more about what I've spoken about or if you want me to do a video on something else that you've got a question about, just let me know and I will hopefully be happy to do it or be able to answer that query for you direct. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.